Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. So you want to be a gardener, do you? Well, you probably have a lot of this around your place. And what is that? Is that dirt? Is it soil? And have you ever thought what's in it and what do you need to have in it to make your garden grow? Stay tuned and I'll show you an easy way to find out. Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. My gardening teacher told me that dirt is a four letter word and dirt is not soil. Dirt is a waste product and soil is alive. But I reminded him that soil is also a four letter word. He didn't really appreciate my sense of humor, but you get the idea that soil is a living medium in which plants grow, and it's not made up of one thing. It's actually made up of several components. As a matter of fact, soils are made up of three basic things, sand, silt, and clay. In fact, those three attributes or components compose the soil and determine its texture and how much micro spacers are in between the soil particles, how well they hold moisture, how well they hold nutrients, and how much space is there for all the roots to develop through it. And depending on what proportion of those three elements, again, sand, silt, and clay, you can describe your soil in a way that other agricultural farmers, home gardeners understand exactly what you're talking about because it's a common language. Well, there's a simple, what's called a jar test that allows you to take a sample of your soil and then dilute it with water and a little bit of non-sudsing detergent, break it down and let it settle out over a period of time. And you can determine with pretty doggone good accuracy what your soil is comprised of and then what you need to do to amend it to give it the characteristics that's needed to be a successful garden plot medium. All right, well, let's begin. I wish I could tell you that I came up with this whole procedure on my own. I'm just not that smart, but I hang around with some great smart people, like in the master gardener class I went to where they showed us how to do the jar analysis for soil texture. Now, if you really wanna know details of this and you wanna get into it and classify the type of soil you have and all that sort of thing, there is a great online resource that we provided a link to in the description below to Clemson University that shows you how the soil texture analysis or the jar test. And this one goes into great detail. Now I'm not gonna go into the same amount of detail, but I'm gonna give you the principles of this and you can see very quickly, there's a visual result using this approach that lets you see what's in your soil. So we're gonna just uh, jump in, we're not gonna go Point by point on all this, you can read that on your own time, but let's look and see what you need to just to make this happen. The first thing you need is the actual soil you're gonna analyze. So you need enough to fill up a mason jar, this type of mason jar with a lid, a sealable lid, about a third full. So a little bit of soil, you need a strainer of some kind to sift the soil through, just to remove the big chunks of things like twigs and sticks and uh, big dirt clods or grass clippings, that sort of thing that aren't really gonna be helpful to the soil analysis. Then you need a cup of water that you're just gonna fill that jar up with after uh, you actually add about a tablespoon of this type of dishwashing soap. And notice this is the kind that is powdered and the reason you need to use dishwashing soap is because it's non-foaming uh, and it won't foam everything up, mess up your results. It's a wetting agent that helps break down the structure of the soil faster when you put it in and you agitate it. It kind of makes water wetter, if that makes sense, and therefore saturates the soil faster, breaks it down its elements to let it settle out. Now you know some of the basic approach, let's just go ahead and do it. First thing we're gonna do is get a good scoop of our soil. And I'm just gonna put it over here and shake it out. Nothing like the taste of dust. Better get used to it if you're gonna be a gardener. Okay, you can see I'm getting all the big kind of sticks out and uh, that you could see that you had a certain percentage of these large clumps in that, but let's get rid of that. Now you can look and see what we've got left over here. 
What we're gonna do now is fill in the jar about a third to somewhere about up in this area right here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we have our soil test in there and you can kind of see it's starting to sift itself out just a little bit when we rolled it forward that lighter particles come to the top, heavier drop to the bottom, but we need to amplify that effect. And the reason to do that is to clear, uh, see clear layers. Now, I'm just gonna take one of the packets that I pulled out and I cut and I got about a tablespoon. It doesn't need to be real precise. Let's go ahead and just dump that in there take that off to the side. And now I have that in there as a wetting agent as much as anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up almost to the top. I need shaker space. We're gonna cap this on, seal it down, and now agitate this significantly. As you can see, I need to cut through until I get all the wet all the way around and there are no dry pockets at all. And continue to agitate it, froth it all up. You're not gonna get a lot of frothing because that dishwashing detergent is more enzyme-based rather than the normal detergent that foams a lot. So you can see here, we have completely destroyed the structure of the soil. And what I mean by that, any kind of structure or little crumbs of soil or ways that the soil was stitched together has been all unstitched. It's completely uh, now broken apart. And now what we're gonna do is just set this aside. If you use the Clemson procedure, they actually use a stopwatch on this and time certain things. In the first minute, you'll see certain things develop. Uh, in um, two hours, you measure another thing. 48 hours later, but we're just gonna kind of show you the quick, um, quick and dirty version of this, and you can go into more detail should you like it. Now, instead of standing here waiting, we actually did this 24 hours ago, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so right now you can see actually the horizons or the stripes. I'm gonna turn this around so we don't have the labeling on the front there. So where you're looking at it, you can clearly see some differentiation. You know what we're finding here? You would normally see sand, which is heaviest, drop to the bottom immediately within the first several seconds. As a matter of fact, in the first couple minutes, you would see a sand layer form. The next thing you're gonna see is silt over the next couple hours. And then in 48 hours, you'll see the clay on the top and then a little band or whatever, there's a lot of organic material in it, that'll settle eventually to the top and filter out of the water and you'll get these bands. Now, this was different components of different soil mixes around here and different uh, places out of the garden. And some of it was from a commercial property. And you can see in this particular sample, there is hardly any sand. We've got a lot of silt right here We've got a little bit of clay right there. And this is all suspended organic material that's gonna drop out over the next 48 hours until this becomes kind of like a semi-clear right here. But you'll see all that filter down. And by that, you can essentially see the percentages. If I wanna balance this soil, I'm gonna to need to do some different things like either add sand or more organic material uh, or add a little bit more clay uh, clay is not all negative, it actually holds water, but you can understand then how the basic components of your soil is just by doing the shaker test. Now one other thing I want to point out, and that is on the Clemson paper, it actually shows you a calculation and a chart by measuring where those land at certain times. You can actually work out and clearly identify in the correct nomenclature, the correct terminology, what your soil is by using the different characteristics. Let me read you a couple. Let's see if these sound familiar to you. You have a clay soil. You have a silty clay loam. You have a sandy clay loam. You have loam. You have clay loam. You have sandy loam and so forth. Those are not just loosey-goosey terms. They're actually 
precise terms based on the combination of those. If you wanted a perfect loam, you'd have 33% sand, 33% silt, and 33% clay. But where does that exist? Very hard. But you can get things working well by adding right amendments or other cultivation practices. Really quick and easy way. I hope you found that to be helpful. And if you did, like the video. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, and that way you'll be notified approximately every Friday of great content like this in the home, the garden, the shop, the kitchen, just great homeowner skills. While you're at it, check out our website at dirtfarmerj.com. Look at our blogs, ways to interact with us, other viewer family members are written in, or our merch, our hats, our shirts. It's a great way to let others know that you prefer to just do it yourself. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from dirtfarmerj.com. And I know my dirt.